Warning, the following episode of Blackwell Podcast contains hella spoilers for Life is Strange. Hi everyone and welcome to the Blackwell Podcast, where we love Life is Strange more than Chloe wants to go to LA. I'm joined here by Joey and Jess, as usual. Hey. Hello. And today we have the absolute privilege to welcome Ashley Birch onto the show. Hi, Ashley. Hey, guys. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? Oh, we're, we're, we're good. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Screaming internally right now, but... <laughs> well, I can't hear it out here. Yeah, which is good. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, we'd embarrass ourselves. Okay, so <laughs> so we don't really have to, um, so much time today, so we're just going to get straight into the questions. Sure. And um, to everyone who submitted, thank thank you um, for submitting questions. Sorry we didn't get all of them, but we're going to try and answer um, as many as we can. So, um, starting off then. So, are there any for, are there any other video games or forms of entertainment that you you draw your inspiration from when vo- voicing Chloe? I think honestly, Chloe is is a lot more personal for me. Um, it's uh, it's funny actually. I listened to some of uh, Hannah's interview with you guys, and uh, I think she had a similar experience with Max in that a lot of um, a lot of Chloe came from um, the parts of myself that have felt abandoned or alone or rejected. Um, so it actually ended up being a very a very internal place that I was pulling most of most of the stuff for chloe from um although i guess maybe there's like no i was gonna say maybe there's like a little bit of april ludgate from parks and rec there but not really i think she's (laughs) mostly she's mostly the the angry parts of ashley i guess (laughs) um so what character or characters do you think that you relate to the most in life is strange Uh, ah yes sorry Oh, no, no, it's fine. Um, I relate, I definitely relate to Max in the sense that um, trying to navigate complex relationships and and do the right thing is something that um, I I try to do a lot. Um, I'm very, I'm hyper aware of my interpersonal relationships and I'm always trying to navigate them in the best way. Um, Although I don't have uh, like the responsibility of an, you know, an entire town <laughs> on my shoulders. <laughs> but, um, and like I said, I also, I, there's definitely parts of me that deeply relate to Chloe. Um, the sense of, you know, of people leaving you, of people abandoning you and the anger that comes from that and the feeling of the need to protect yourself, um, from being hurt because you have been hurt before, not trusting people. Um, there are definitely, you know, when I was younger, I felt that very acutely. Um, I have echoes of that now as an adult. Um, I've lost people before too, and it's created a lot of that sort of feeling in me. So I think Chloe is, is so important to me, and I had such a connection, and it did come from such an internal place because she is kind of a manifestation of id in a lot of ways. She doesn't really have a filter, and she's wearing her heart on her sleeve. But I think... I also think she resonates with people for that reason, because I think that's kind of a universal experience for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. All right. So between your talents as a writer, director and actress, what are your what are you wishing to cultivate more? uh, All of them, ideally, I suppose. Um, (laughs) um, I guess the cheating answer is directing because you kind of have to know about the other two to do it well. So, um, uh, Yeah, I mean, I definitely have the least amount of experience in directing, and I have the most to, I mean, I have a lot to learn in all of those uh, avenues, but I I think I have the most to learn um, in directing, so probably directing. But um, again, I I learn more about acting every time I go into a booth, so, um, and and I love doing voiceover. It's hard, it's hard to choose, but I guess I I know the least about directing right now, so that's kind of where I'm more interested in in, uh, cultivating myself. Mm-hmm. Is um this so is the rocket jump skit that you did uh, fan friction? Is that the only thing you've directed, or have you done more? That is the only like official 
directing thing that I've done. I've done like on episodes of Hey Ash, I will give Anthony direction or like, you know what I mean? But in terms of um, figuring out the composition for every single shot, deciding, you know, literally doing the job of a director uh, in all respects, it was the first time that I'd ever done something like that. Gotcha. Well, you did awesome. It was hilarious. Oh, thanks, guys. I really appreciate it. All right. Um, okay, so you tend to gravitate more towards comedy in, in your work. So what is it like to get to show your um, chops and doing a very dramatic role? And will you search how to do more of them? I really, really... I mean, Life is Strange is such a remarkable game. I... It's honestly one of the type it's the it's the type of game that like if I do nothing else in my career, at least I have Life is Strange. It was such a rewarding and meaningful experience. And I think all of us kind of put our heart and soul into these characters. Um all of us being, you know, all the voice actors and also our director Phil and everyone at Don't Nod. Um there was just such a dedication to the game and to the story. And uh, an understanding of what they were trying to do that was so remarkable. Um, and I loved it. I mean, it was it was probably... It was the most um, challenging emotionally. But I think that's why it was so meaningful. Um, and I, I adored it. And the, and the nice thing about Chloe, too, is that she didn't... She wasn't just, you know, in pain and dour. She also... She was, you know... She's fierce and she's funny. She has all these shades. Um, and so I got to really, I got to embody a lot. Of, I had the opportunity and the, and the privilege to embody a lot of different things in her. Um, so man, like, yeah, I, I, <laughs> I adored, I adored, I like adore the game. And, and I'm so grateful um, that I, I got to be a part of it. And um, if, you know, I, I love acting in general, um, mm -hmm. but I think this particular type of dramatic game was so compelling to be a part of because it was so well done and so focused. And um, so, yeah, it's basically it's one of those things where, like, I love doing both. But the best thing is just when you get a meaty role, you know, when people like because a lot of times um in any sort of, in any type of acting, you'll, you'll run into people that don't really know exactly what they're looking for or ne exa know exactly what they want for the character. But the guys that don't nod knew, they knew who Chloe was. They knew where they wanted to take her. And so I had the opportunity to just be a collaborator and be additive to the process. And, um, yeah, it was just awesome. Well, I think, uh, I think the dedication that you put into the character really shows. And because mm -hmm. look at how many people love Chloe. And <laughs> Thank you. I love <laughs> Chloe too. <laughs> such an awesome character. So um, I'll keep I'll keep my gushing to a minimum. Uh, but thank you for your work <laughs> as Chloe. Thank you for <laughs> playing the game. <laughs> uh, so the big the big quintessential question: mm. Bay B A E or Bay B A Y? It's funny because um, if I go to conventions, I always ask people what they chose at the end. Mm -hmm. And anyone that chose Arcadia Bay, I can just see it in their face immediately because they, they look instantly guilty. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay, guys. It's totally fine. <laughs> um, you know, my friend Donald actually had a really lovely uh, viewpoint of the ending, which is that it's it's kind of like... Uh, I feel like I'm going to butcher what he said, but it's sort of like, I don't know if metaphor is the right word, but getting the opportunity to actually say goodbye to someone, mm -hmm. which we often, you know, in life don't get, um, if people die or, or, you know, even like move away or whatever it is, and you don't get that opportunity to like have that moment with them. Mm -hmm. Um, so I guess for my story of life is strange. It feels like Chloe's death is this inevitable thing and Max is fighting against the tide and fighting against the inevitability of her needing to die. Um, and it's a story about growing up in so many ways, but I think that is the biggest, that is the thing, losing someone that you love is the thing that makes you grow up more than anything. Um, 
there are adults that haven't truly grown up until they lose someone that they love, you know? Um, and, um, for me, I think that's, that's, that's my story as in, in terms of life is strange is, um, is the experience of wanting to fight against everything to keep this person and to know that there's, there's no option, um, other than to let them go. And, the bittersweet opportunity to say goodbye, um, to have that like moment where you get to send them off. Um, so in that respect, I guess thematically, I, I like the idea of, of sacrificing Chloe, um, because it is, it, I think it, it, it becomes this beautiful, this sort of really beautiful metaphor of growing up and taking responsibility and, and, and accepting that um that things are out of your control um that said though i don't i definitely don't invalidate anyone that chose chloe um at all um because if you were if you had the option to save your to save your loved one you know but um i guess having gone through loss myself um Mm -hmm. it's something that resonates with me the idea of 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 acceptance and and the sort of bravery that it takes to to do that and um be when when all you want to do is just like run and hide kind of thing um right so it was meaningful for me in that way um but also at the same time it's like the entire game is about your your relationship with Chloe um and even though there are other people in the town that you care about, the game is like focused on, which is very smart of it, is focused entirely on this connection that you have with this person. Um, so it's really cool that they made such a good, difficult choice. Um, it's neat to see the player breakdown percentage because it's pretty, it's still pretty close. I think it's like globally, it's like 60% or 55% saving people save Arcadia Bay and then the other percentage people save Chloe. Um, right. Sorry, this is a long winded answer, but yeah, I, I guess for me personally, it is thematically compelling to me. The idea of like having that moment of saying goodbye to the person that you love before they die, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know about these guys, but I totally agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so to those uh, who are going, through similar situations as Chloe, what advice would you give to them? Oh boy, man. Oh. Emotionally, not constantly getting shot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Avo- yeah. Avoid drunk guards. <laughs> avoid. Um... <laughs> no. Yeah. I mean, man. I uh... <sighs> voicing Chloe. Like again, it was so internal. But then I. To me, I feel like I give my best performances when I really feel empathy for the character. And I grew to care so much about Chloe. And I and imagining that type of person, imagining a person that has lost so much and is, and is so young and is trying so hard to figure out what to do with all the pain that she has, it, man, it, it, it really broke my heart, like... I actually didn't know what was going to happen in episode five until I got into the booth and Phil told me like, just so you know where we're headed, the last choice of the game is between, you know, saving Arcadia Bay and saving Chloe. And my heart just broke in half. Um, because here's this, here's this young woman that's, so, she's just gone through so much shit and she suffered so much and she's lost so much. Um, so I guess, I mean, first off, I, I just have, I, I care so much about this game because I know that it is such a fantastic story that makes people feel like they're not alone. Mm -hmm. When I think people rest, I feel like people relate to Chloe and respond to Chloe because so many people carry a similar pain. And I guess that's the primary thing that I want to say is that you're, you're really not alone. And I know what it feels like to feel like you are. I know what it feels like to believe that no one else can reach you or can help you. But I promise that that's not true. I promise that there are people 
that are going through something similar, or if, even if they're not, can understand and want to help you. Um, and I know, especially when you've gone through a lot of pain, it's so hard to trust people or to want to reach out, but it's the only way to heal and you can't do it on your own. And I think that last scene with Chloe is so powerful from a writing standpoint too, because she's been so obstinate and selfish in some ways and, um, angry and, I think the reason at the end that she's able to accept that she might need to die is because of her friendship with Max. And I know sometimes it feels like, well, I don't have a Max in my life. How am I sp And I think sometimes we stand in our own way because we think we're unlovable or because we think no one will ever be able to accept us the way that we, we are. Um, mm -hmm. But you have to give people a chance to prove you wrong. Even if all people have done is let you down, you have to keep giving people the chance to prove you wrong. Because that's, to me, that, that's the main thing that's helped me. That's the, that's the only thing. Um, are finding people that I, that I love, that I can trust, that, that take me the way that I am and love me despite how I might behave or the things that I'm going through or because of those things. Um, and... Yeah, so I guess uh, just just really trying to believe that you're you're not alone in the pain that you feel. There are other people that are going through something similar. And as scary as it is and as hard as it is to try to open yourself up to the possibility that you will find someone that loves you the way that you are and to and to try to trust people and to try to give up yourself. Um because I think that's the way that you heal. I don't know if that made sense. I'm uh, I'm glad that I brought tissues. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, from a personal level, thank you mm -hmm. for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Uh, so fan questions, yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's <laughs> let's get into this. Try and cancel. Um, <laughs> right. So Julia would like to know um, how was working on Life is Strange different than working on other games such like such as Borderlands Two. Well, from. Uh, from lots of, I mean, it's, it's different in so many ways. Um, the main, the main concern of Life is Strange is the story because that's basically, you know, it's an adventure game technically, I guess. So that's sort of all that you have. There's not really mechanically anything outside of the story. That's the main focus of the game. So there was such an understanding of, of, uh, and an emphasis on, um, on nailing the story. Um, in terms of character performance and all that kind of thing. Not to say that any game that I have, that I've worked on hasn't tried to do that, but because the story was, was the entire focus of Life is Strange, it's just a different type of experience, you know? Um, mm -hmm. And in particular, like, I think this is the first time that I've played, I'm trying to think. I'm afraid I'm going to shoot myself in the foot, but I feel like this is the one of the only times that I've played, like, a primary, primary role in a game. Like, Tiny Tina was a side was like a main character in a sense, but she was like sort of a side, you know, she was side missions and that kind of thing. And right. Cassie Cage is, is one in a cast of many. Um, and these are all super fun, awesome characters. Chloe, I think is the first character that I've played. That's like, she's almost the, she is your, she is your motivation in the game. She is, you know, she is your connection point. She is the, 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 the person that, kind of all of the action is centered around. Um, so there is a great responsibility in that and also a great opportunity in that, um, which is very different than other games that I've been in. Um, we also got to, we got the opportunity to record with other voice actors a lot, which was fantastic. So I spent, I did all of the major emotional scenes in the game I did with Hannah, um, which was so wonderful. Um, and I think you can, you can feel it more um, in or I hope you can, <laughs> because we definitely felt it in the booth. We were just sobbing all the time. But I think you can feel it in the performances, you know, that we were there with each other. Um, and um, there was less screaming <laughs> than other games. Um, less uh, attack efforts. Less falling off of, <laughs> of cliffs. Um, but yeah, it was mostly, it felt like... Um, it felt closer to to... I've never done like an animated movie or anything as far as voice acting, but it felt closer to that than um, being in a video game. Um, 
I suppose. Gotcha. Um, so Amethyst, whom I believe you've met, actually, she was the Chloe cosplayer that's like embodies Chloe. Yes. Outside of, um, she wants to know what were you like at Chloe's age? At Chloe's age. I was very, I was extremely shy and quiet. Um, I read comic books, um, sometimes at lunch on my own. There was a boy I liked in high school that um, liked Watchmen. He liked Alan Moore, so I mm-hmm. deliberately read comic books in front of him to try to manipulate him <laughs> to talk to me. Um, um, I was in choir. Um, I played lots of video games. I mostly didn't talk to boys. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I was not athletic. <laughs> I, um, uh, I I was mostly just extremely shy. I was kind of I was kind of the anti Chloe in a lot of ways. I I tried. I kept my head down. I did my work. <laughs> I was super quiet. Um, but I had a little Chloe in me. I think that I just didn't let out. <laughs> Same. <laughs> so uh, you kind of already answered this question, but if you could just briefly repeat or add anything, um, Lena wants to know: Did you have do you have anything in common with Chloe? I definitely have. Um, I, I I I have a lot of the same psychosis as Chloe. There's a part of me that has the fear of being abandoned, has the fear of being alone, um, has anger from the times that I have been abandoned, um, uh, has insecurity about whether or not I'm, you know, worth sticking around for that kind of thing. Um, a lot of that stuff is stuff that I, that I grapple with, um, for various reasons from various points in my life. Um, um, and it's interesting, it's interesting how differently it, it presents itself. Um, in me than it does in Chloe, but I think that's a that's a touch point, touching point for both of us. Do you uh, do you say hello a lot? Ah, uh, dude, I've started. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. I never did, and well, I I did like once in a blue moon because I have friends from Northern California that I hang out mm. with a lot. But now I say it all the fucking time. It's like <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> um. I like I just real I like one day I woke up and I was like, am I just Chloe now? Like <laughs> I've never used to say hella. But now it's 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 a frequent thing. It's a common occurrence. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, the game has pretty much caused a lot of people in the community to just say it on a say hella unironically now, so Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's infectious. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, so um we got this question a lot. Like a ton of um, people wanted to know, have you ever considered writing a Life is Strange episode for Hop? Yes, and it's one of those things where it's like, I really want to do, what would the best version of that be? So I'm like, kind of crippled by <laughs> by, by that. I'm like, trying to think of, I have thought about it. Um, my brother's played the game now, so I should just sit down with him and be like, what would, a, what would, a, a, uh, what would be the best permutation of a Life is Strange Hop be? It'd probably be something like, I would just think Chloe was hot, and then, I don't know. Uh <laughs> I don't know. I need to think about it more. But I have thought about it. We just don't have a good idea yet. Okay. Three minutes of you, Anthony, and Papa Birch sobbing. <laughs> right. <exactly. laughs> um, young Cho Sugar, I hope I'm saying that right, uh, wants to know, how did you get in character and in, in the mood to perform the like really emotional scenes, um, like Rachel being found, for example, right. uh, so well? And uh, especially, you know, when there was no actual scene around you, it was just a booth. Who? I mean, I like I said, I I have um, I have lost people in my life before, so it. And there's also this interesting thing where I most of the time I didn't know it was going to happen in a particular episode until I got into the booth. Mm-hmm. And so, um, I think a lot of it was just empathy for Chloe because I know what that feels like. Um, not necessarily literally physically finding someone that you love, uh, and knowing that they've died, but you know, the experience of having someone you deeply love die. Um, 
so a lot of it ended up just coming from the, you know, the empathic response to like, oh, that's happened to me. This is happening to this character that I've come to care about. And um, so a lot of it was just sort of visceral and raw and like came from the gut and, and wasn't necessarily like a, a, a thing that I prepared for. Um, in terms of Chloe in general, um, I have a very specific literal physical stance that I take, which is usually like all my weight is on one hip and my arms are floppy. (laughs) Um, just sort of like a, uh, you know, kind of like, um, (laughs) like a laid back. (laughs) Yeah. It's funny. A lot of, a lot of voice acting I think is, is, is physicality, um, which is funny because you're using your voice, but you need your, your, you need, you need your entire body. You need all your faculties to, to, to convey the character. Um, so I tend to have different, like literal different ways that I stand depending on who the character is. And Chloe's is very much like a hip popped out, like just sort of like flop, floppy gesturing when she's like, uh, you know, <laughs> like, kind of, this is so fucking stupid, you know, um, <laughs> kind of thing. Gotcha. Um, so this next question is from Sam and they want to know, um, what is your favorite Chloe line throughout the game? And would you mind saying it in Chloe's voice? I would not mind. Um, probably my favorite Chloe line is when Max comes back from one of the many alternate realities she was in. I think it might be the one where Chloe's paralyzed and she just like jumps on Chloe and gives her a huge hug. And Chloe goes, uh, you sound high. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. All right, sorry. Kind of <laughs> was freaking out internally again. <laughs> the feels. Yeah. Um, so Taylor would like to know what scene did you enjoy performing the most? It's so funny because they were so emotionally draining, but I think there is something strangely enriching to feel so connected to a story and to a character and to be surrounded by people that treat it so seriously that you really go to an emotional place. So, um, I think either honestly the scene of finding Rachel or the last scene where I'm, I'm asking Max to make the choice. Um, it's, 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 it feels weird to say either of those scenes cause they're so emotional, but I think it was just so, there's something so enriching to care so much and to be and to and to be working with Hannah who also just puts just put everything she had into the character um is just a really really special experience um and rare and um yeah so so probably one one of those scenes maybe I'm just a masochist <laughs> <laughs> oh so Juliana wants to know what is the the most beautiful lesson you've learned from Life is Strange? Hmm. What a lovely question. Um I guess it's that Chloe is inspiring to me because she's gone through so much, like I've said before, and she's lost so much. And at the end of the game, you know, even though she's crying and even though she's, she's terrified, she's literally willing to die because she's come to a place where she, she's come to a place of acceptance with Mm -hmm. it. And, and that's, you know, despite, or, or maybe because of all of the, all of the things she's been through, she finds the ultimate strength in herself to let go, if that's what Max wants her to do. Um, and that to me is, is, it's so fucking just, just impossibly sad, but also so brave and just so just so strong of her to to come to that place after everything that she's been through and i think even though it's such a it's such a harrowing choice and such a difficult ending kind of either way um 
it's just it's sort of the the beauty I think of knowing that Chloe was never Chloe was not stuck in the angry selfish angst that she started in she changed and she grew she grew to the point where she accepted the possibility that she needed to die for other people and that to me, I think, is incredibly inspiring, inspiring because I think, myself included, I think we often believe that we are shackled by the things that we've been through or the person that we used to be or the pain that we're feeling now. And I think Chloe's arc is so compelling and is so beautiful because it is a reflection of the way that people can change and how trauma can Trauma doesn't keep us from becoming the people that we need to or want to be. It can embolden us, actually, to to take the steps that we need to take, um, which is something that, you know, is important to me in my life. And um, I find the ending, again, even though it's impossibly sad, um, extremely inspiring for that reason. Yeah, of course. Wow, um, thank you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So um, the final question is from Anthony, and he wants to know um, what are some of the upcoming projects you're allowed to talk about? The upcoming projects I'm allowed to talk about? Um, Let's see. <laughs> are there any I'm allowed to talk about? I, I'm doing um, – <laughs> so I work for um, Rocket Jump now. Um, I mean, I did before, but I'm I'm working for them uh, in a larger capacity in, in, in the sense that I'm part of um, – a group of folks called the shorts team and we are making shorts for the rocket jump YouTube channel every two weeks. So, um, if you're into the stuff that happened on the Hulu show, it's a similar group of people. Um, and we're releasing stuff on YouTube every two weeks. Um, and will be for the whole year. Um, so that's happening. I'm trying to think if I feel like everything else I'm not allowed to talk about. She's a bummer. Oh, um, bored with life, which is a web series that, I'm part of um, my friend Donald that I mentioned earlier as mm -hmm. one of the creators. It's if you like board games, it's a really fun sitcom -y type show on YouTube that I'm in sometimes. Um, that's really fun. And um, I think that's all I can talk about. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, guys. So that's all questions that we have time for. Thank you, Ashley, for joining us. I mean, it's been a complete honor and privilege for us. Thank you guys so much. It's been wonderful. Yeah. Of course. Uh, when uh when we got your response on Monday, it was my birthday and it was oh, inadvertently the birthday. best birthday present I've ever given. Oh eaten, man. So. Happy so, birthday. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. That's awesome. End this episode by talking about this Saturday that we um have musician Kofa on with us. So if you want mm -hmm. to send any questions to him, just email it to us at blackwellpodcast@hotmail.com. Right. So yeah, it's probably time to end the episode. So Thanks, Ashley. Again, we cannot thank it enough. Thank you enough for this. <laughs> of course. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, guys. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll see everybody on Saturday. Yep. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Take care, guys.